Hello, my name is Greg George, and today I want to demonstrate how to do a scan to scan or scan only inspection inside of Control X. So, over the years, I've gotten a few questions of, of, about this, and I have made a little bit of content, but I really haven't made enough to kind of adequately show the entire workflow. So today I wanted to basically take, I have a few scans of the same object and show how you could use this to do a scan to scan inspection or a scan to itself is really what uh, another option is. And then uh, show you how to set that up inside of Control X because it's not necessarily the most intuitive thing to do. So to start off, you know, when you open Control X, it's going to be inside of the result data one folder or area. Um, but what I do is I come over to the input data area. So this is where you can drag stuff in to Control X, but it doesn't actually end up in an inspection yet. It's just like this open container that the data can be inside of Control X, but not necessarily in an inspection routine right so I just went ahead and I dragged in this part and you'll see it's not aligned so if I hit the front view it's just floating off in Never Never Land and you see it's under here under this uh, mess shape point clouds mess mesh point clouds area so what I'm gonna do is come over to regions and then I'm gonna auto segment and it's I'm going to start out with 20 and then my slider here at like two notches over and then pretty smooth. And then leave this here, uh, merge primitive shapes and go ahead and run that. So what this is going to do is just automatically go through the mesh. This is just like the region group in DX, uh, very similar. Except for in here we're going to use these regions to create selectable areas for our inspection instead of reverse engineering. And you'll see here in a minute why I'm utilizing these. Um, by default, this is pretty typical. It's filtering based on curvature and stuff. So you'll see here, this is a cylindrical area, like this is a cylindrical area. And then you can see, if you look at this through the at eyes of like, this should be a CAD model, right? Um, you'd want to break these regions up, right? So I'm going to switch over to the line tool. I like using that. And I am not going to be as careful as I typically would be if I was setting up an actual inspection routine, just for the sake of time. So you guys, you guys don't have to watch me segment this out. But this is kind of how I do this, right? Where I want this to be a selectable area, this to be a selectable area, and then rotate around the model make sure that this and you'll see this connects to that flat area so let's go ahead and grab that line tool and then split that out and I like to split by doing exactly what I did drawing a line and creating this buffer zone between the two I'm fine with that um, you see here this cylinder the cylinder is also getting a little bit of that fillet so you can switch over to the rectangle tool select a region and then enlarge it this is kind of another shortcut so that way that data doesn't end up as part of that cylindrical calculation and in here this flat plane is wrapping around there you could shrink that back or I can also another technique is to just grab this uh, you know uh, smart selector tool and just drag up and then create its own region and again, I'm not going to spend tons and tons of time like polishing these things to make them exactly how I would want them. That's what I would do if I was setting up a inspection routine. But just for the sake of today and you know moving this along, I'll use I'll use these regions here, kind of how they are. You just double check this, and you see, hey, this is a free form. You know, maybe that needs to be a plane so you can come over here because it'll affect how you select it when you go use it over in the inspection world. So over here, you can actually say, I want this to be a plane and it'll override whatever's there. So if you click on it now, it's a plane, right? Um, so over in the properties, you see here that also says cylinder. So I can come over and just say, 
Let's make that a plane. And that affects what, again, you'll see in a little bit when I go ahead and here, here, this sees it as a cylinder, but it's grabbing some of that flat planar, planar area. So I'll come over and insert that way. This actually is a cylinder and that actually is a plane, right? And then for these top areas, we'll see how accurate this is. You see, if I click on this, this is kind of a, a mess in a way. So you can, I'm looking at it right now, just identifying where these areas kind of split off. So I can come over and instead of doing what I have done so far, I can use the paintbrush and use that paintbrush to insert and kind of break this, this region away from the others. And now if you see, I, if I click on that one, it's kind of mostly that flat area. And then I can click on the others that would also belong to that area. And let's just go ahead and merge those together. And then there's another one that kind of wraps around the edge here too. So in this case, what I tend to do is like that, insert that as its own grab this and that and then hit merge not perfect um, but just to show like hey that's a planar top surface yes I could do more work to it and fix it and make it better than that but I just roll over anything that I want to measure that I would want to measure make sure that it's merged and it's labeled right um, because it won't measure it properly obviously if if I don't separate that area you see this from the cylindrical area and then the other thing I can do in this instance is you see that's a cylinder and go ahead and connect that cylinder with this part of the cylinder to make it one cylinder so if I go use that for measurement in my inspection it'll actually do it appropriately so now take this part of the cylinder hold shift that part of the cylinder Let's do that one more time and then hit merge alright so now that I've created my regions I'm also thinking about what regions I'm gonna use to align it with as well right and then you can see internally let's go ahead I wanna use these two so let's break these cylinders up before I move on here so I'll break that one break that one and again this is all an alternative if you don't have the CAD model this is why we're doing this is because I don't have a CAD model I want to scan a, a good part and then compare other parts to this good part right so let's go back to region somehow I accidentally clicked rolled my mouse off of that and insert and I didn't quite break that one up because we didn't do this right here so there so there's that cylinder plane cylinder now we're we will go ahead and align the two parts together we're gonna align this to the world so again remember this isn't aligned yet so let's go ahead and align this to the world coordinate system by coming over to measured so that's one tricky thing is you don't go to alignments because the alignments category is aligning two parts together for metrology purposes for inspection purposes you come over to the measured data and you transform this data is what we want to do so I'll come over here and transform measured data and I make sure that that's selected I hit next and then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna say interactive alignment so this is just like the DX interactive alignment You're very similar here I'm gonna switch over to XYZ and I'm gonna say I want to I want my zero to be the intersection of that uh, plane and this cylinder so it's gonna put zero at the intersection of this cylinder and that plane and then I can say I want the y-axis to be on that cylinder 
and then let's say that the z-axis is on this plane right so it'll clock it facing me there maybe not the best way to do it but it'll get it aligned so if I hit OK now you'll see that we squared that thing up accidentally hit that we'll hit the front view and you'll see that we squared this up so now we aligned essentially what I want to use is my reference data so once I align my reference data I can grab this and say move to result data one and by default it always puts it inside of measure data so we're gonna right click on that and say move to reference and so now this is our reference data to compare to now if I wanted to measure this exact part you can one of the problems here is I can measure this part and say I want to create a dimension here to there to there right and, and pull out a dimension but the issue is it doesn't have anything to compare to right um, so if you want to measure this exact part one trick that I do is drag in the same data set as the measured data as well so this is like exactly the same data as this data come in do your initial alignment and then just turn that off and then now let's come over to our dimensions and we'll go ahead and make a dimension let's just do a radial dimension on this now it actually has something to compare it to even though it's the same data itself but in this case you can override the reference and just say I want the reference to be 23.5 and it will run the calculation on what it should be to what it actually is right so from here you can just create dimensions now I want to make us a, a dimension from the bottom to here and then it'll ask you because it's a it's a crazy number we're measuring from scan data right so I can come in here override that and say this is what it should be here are your tolerances okay and then if I need to come in and edit that tolerance like there you go if I need to make an angle dimension from let's say here to there there's my angle dimension I can override this and say hey that should be 90 if that's what it needs to be let's make a I didn't really pay attention to these holes and making sure that they were properly properly segmented right but I could say I want to measure from hole to hole hit OK but you get the idea now I'm just creating dimensions comparing the scan data to itself now if I wasn't comparing it to itself I can come over here and hit delete I have actually another scan data set of a, a different scan so if I just drag in another one so this is not the same scan data set as that this is how it would work if I wanted to actually measure other parts right using a scan as my reference so it'll work the same way you set up create your regions as to everything you want to use for alignment or measurement and then create those now there there's little drawbacks here and there like things that are more difficult like this right here I have to re section that region to make sure it only gets the flat plane and sometimes there's barely enough data right to create a good region here and there so there's drawbacks it's not like using a CAD model but it's really it's really effective for creating some from dimensions and automation straight from the scan data by using these regions and then from here you do your typical I'm gonna create a report I'll just go ahead and walk through that just in case people haven't seen that before so yeah you just come in here lay out your report 
here's everything we didn't do a best fit or anything because they're at least initially they were the same part and if you need to save out a PDF you just hit PDF there and go from there so this is my method for doing a scan to scan or scan only scan verse itself inspection and how to set one up um, the way I think it's most efficient um, hopefully this helps thanks a lot